Welcome to our series on the 12 teachings before Christmas. Uh, my topic today is why go to confession. I personally love this topic, not just as a priest who hears confessions, but I personally love to go to confession. And I remember in my own conversion story, which had to do with 9-11, where I was present for that tragedy and it changed my life. And it was actually a couple encounters with two priests down there on ground zero that had such an impact on me. One was blessing a dead firefighter right in front of me. And as he blessed him, as I reflected back on that, it made me think that, you know, at the end of life, more important than a doctor is a priest. Because the priest helps us get to heaven, especially through the sacrament of confession. And then a few days later, I received the Eucharist from another priest. And I took a nap and I had just like a beautiful, peaceful dream that seemed kind of heavenly. And I woke up and I left. And I had been there that moment when the second plane entered the second tower, about four blocks away. I watched the, the building explode. I heard it as if like a bomb went off right next to me. It was the loudest thing I ever heard. And we scattered in, in pandemonium and, and watched those towers burn. And literally I watched people leaping from some of the windows, falling to their death. Um, and as we know, that day uh, between Ground Zero in New York and Pennsylvania in the Pentagon, almost 3,000 people died um, in an instant. And for that effect that it had on my own person and my own personality, I remember when I left after five days working at Ground Zero, um, I was affected pretty deeply. I probably had some kind of form of post-traumatic stress syndrome. Um, I was very emotional and I was upset and angry and I was kind of lost, to be honest with you. Um, and I remember one day a friend of mine said, you know, you should go to confession. And it had been a little while and I needed it. I needed to talk to somebody. So I went and um, he connected me with a very good priest. And I, I said, Father, you know, if I would have died that day, I know I was not ready to meet God. Because when I grew up, I knew what was right and wrong. And I, I knew what the right um, thing to do was in my practice of the faith. And I had strayed. I kind of lost my way after college and in college. And, um, and I, so I made a big confession. And I felt so much better afterward, like a burden had left me. I'm sure many of you listening have had a similar experience of that burden that leaves our soul when we present it to God and we hear those beautiful words, your sins are forgiven, go in peace. I absolve you of your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And it was truly life altering. I remember afterward telling the priest, I said, Father, you know, I don't want to just live for, uh, you know, just getting what I can out of life or fun or just going on the adventure of life. I want to live for a higher purpose. I either want to get married or become a priest. And he says, well, why don't you just keep coming back? We can work on it in some spiritual direction. So I used to go back to him every couple of weeks and go to confession and then uh, receive spiritual direction on the life of prayer. And honestly, I look back and that is when my life changed. Literally, it changed when I made a decision to go to confession at that point every couple of weeks. I now try to go every week or every seven to 10 days um, not because of maybe doing horrible things, because of the great grace and the relief and the joy and the communion of the Holy Spirit that it gives me to go to confession. But I remember, uh, for me, really kind of the game changer was um, meeting with the priest face to face and confessing my sins face to face is I really mark that as the time in my life when I made a decision for Christ and to truly try to live according to the way of Christ in an intentional way. I remember what, of course, the, the church has always allowed behind the scene, uh, screen confessions and, and there's a wisdom to that and there's a goodness to that. And it's, it's wonderful because it gives the person that protection and that anonymity and that freedom to be able to just lay their burdens down without worrying um, or feeling what might be a shame that can come from, from being their identity, noto identity kind of noticed or a face-to-face. -face. That's fine. That's perfectly fine. No, no problem with that. But I think for me personally, um, the idea of facing a confessor um, made it more real that I was facing God. I think when I was younger and I would just kind of, in a sense, try to hide myself from God a little bit and, and just talk with Him directly and uh, just ask for mercy and then go back out and live my life, I, I don't think I took it as seriously as when I would go before the priest and confess um, and say, this is who I am, this is what I've done. It was humbling and actually as I've grown in the spiritual life, I realized humility is really good for us actually. It's the antidote to the devil's, devil's weapon, which is pride. And so part of confession is confronting ourselves before God um, and being humble 
And that's actually one of the goods of confession. And some people say, well, you know, why can't I just confess directly to God? And I always tell people, you should, and we, we, we do. Every night before we go to bed, we should do our examination of conscience and talk with the Lord and reconcile. Just like somebody you love, you want to say you're sorry before the night ends and not to go to bed angry or with unforgiveness. We should try to reconcile. And we do that directly with God in a relational way. But to receive the actual forgiveness of sins, we go to God in the sacrament of confession. And the reason why, when we look at John chapter 20, verses 19 and following, we see that in the resurrection, Jesus came and he breathed on the apostles, the first priests, right? And he breathes on them and he says, receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven, whose sins you retain are retained. And in doing so, he instituted the sacrament of confession. He instituted and gave to men that he had called apart to serve him as his priests, as his presbyters, um, the power to forgive sins as a mediator. We know the forgiveness comes from God, but it comes through that sacrament. Because in that sacrament, the priest is Jesus Christ. And we say that the priest acting in the sacraments acts in persona Christi in Latin, meaning in the person of Christ. And so in the, the words of the institution at the Eucharist, and the words of the absolution, it's actually Jesus himself penetrating the soul with his grace through the instrument of the priest. And, and so that's why we go to the priest for confession. It says also in the fifth chapter of James to confess your sins to one another and that when someone's sick, they call the priest and as they pray over them, their sins, if they've committed sins, their sins will be forgiven, the word says. And so this practice started from the very beginning and it became the ordinary practice of the church for the forgiveness of sins and the reconciliation of a penitent to God and to the church and so this is why we do that. But also there are other goods that come from confession. In fact, um, many times, many times as a penitent, when I've gone to confession, the words of the priest or the counsel that I received um, were life-changing and certainly brought consolation in a moment of need, brought me so many times, I've been, I, I felt weak going to confession. And the, the words of the priest or even the penance assigned strengthened me. I left strengthened with a new energy to want to follow the Lord and live a righteous life because I felt free and I felt like a word of counsel from God through the priest to strengthen me to make better decisions after I left. So confession for me personally has been such a powerful instrument of growth in grace. And it, and it can be for you as well. Uh, how many times those of us who are priests have heard confession of people who haven't been there for a long time and they may come in nervous or they're worried, they don't know the words. No, it doesn't matter. It's no, no worries at all. It's a joy as a priest to receive someone back, just like the prodigal son when he came back. You know, and the father, he doesn't have him go through the litany of all of his sins or grovel. He just receives him with joy back as his son and he rejoices. And Jesus says there's more joy in heaven when one person comes back repentant than 99 righteous people who don't have to repent. And so there in confession is really a, a sanctuary of mercy. It's a place of healing a place of love, a place of, of humility. Uh, many times, for many people, it's been a place of, of tears of healing. Um, but certainly it's a place of unloading the burden that is sin and receiving again the graces of our baptism stirred up and that saving grace, that sanctifying grace that comes into the soul to purify the soul. Even if you only have what are called venial or light sins, it's such a gift to be able to lay those down and, and to receive a strength to perhaps avoid those vices that trip us up in life. Because it's not just that we get our sins forgiven. Every confession is like a, a liberation and a healing. We receive the grace and a strength to try to make better decisions and to choose the right thing and to avoid sin afterward. And so really, um, it's a win-win on so many levels to go to confession. Um, the Catechism of the Catholic Church lists a few effects. I just want to go over them and just read them because sometimes we don't think about them. We think of it as just a place to go get forgiven, but there's more that happens in confession. So I want to read them now from the Catechism, which is a great book, by the way, if you don't have in your home. I would encourage you to get the Catechism of the Catholic Church. It summarizes our faith. And if you go to point 1496, it says, you know, the spiritual effects of penance are, first, reconciliation with God by which the penitent recovers grace. I already mentioned that. Grace comes back into our soul and we're back in communion with God. The remission of eternal punishment incurred by mortal sins. It's a reminder that, uh, as uh, the letter of John says, there are sins which are mortal, which is unto death. That if we die with mortal sin that aren't repentant, that aren't repented, 
and aren't forgiven and, and we're not sorry for, we risk losing our soul and going to hell. And so repenting of mortal sin is really an urgency. We should try to do it as soon as possible. Find a priest if there's mortal sin and that will be remitted in confession if we're truly sorry. Um, the remission, at least in part, of temporal punishment resulting from sin. So we remember that um, in addition to being forgiven, we're also meant to um, make a, an act of, of making a kind of a penance, right? Sometimes it's light, sometimes it might be something a little stronger. Why? Because there are effects on our soul. We know that the sin forgiven doesn't mean that we're suddenly virtuous and that we want to always do the right thing. We might be forgiven, but we may not be yet strong enough or stronger to always avoid that sin. And so um, there can be, for our lack of interior repentance or the lack of perfection inside or the lack of detaching from those tendencies, uh, tem temporal punishment and purgatory. So um, when we go to confession for those lighter sins, it can remit even that temporal punishment in purgatory. Finally, it says also peace and serenity of conscience and spiritual consolation. We talked about that, that beautiful peace we receive when we ask God's forgiveness and receive God's forgiveness. And then an increase in the spiritual strength for the Christian battle. It is a battle and there is an enemy, um, but we have this incredible resource in Jesus Christ through the sacrament of confession. If it's been a while, on Monday, on tomorrow we have Reconciliation Monday in the Archdiocese of New York and the Holy Cross Church from three, excuse me, from four until um, eight or as long as the lines go, will be available in the church. Come on in for confession, receive that mercy, that gift of God's grace. God bless you.